Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HBC. We're here in Nolens at SC14 at the cool IT Systems booth. And I'm here with the CEO, Jeff Lyon. What do you guys got going here with liquid cooling at SC14? Well, this year, like others, we're showcasing all that we've done in the past uh, you know, year or so in liquid cooling. We've got a lot of progress in, in adoption, a lot of projects that we're showcasing here on the booth, and a little bit of new technology. Okay. okay. Well, um, why don't we do the walkthrough? Show us how this stuff works and what you got going. Sure. Well, we can start right here with uh, some of our what we call server modules. You know, each different manufacturer has various different form factors for servers. What we are showcasing here is a few different installations that we've done. This one's actually based on a Dell PowerEdge um, model that has kind of four blade types uh, nodes in the in in one 2U box. Um, so we've got. Uh, this customized solution here, and we've got the uh, the coolant uh, is circulated into the system, gathering the heat from each of the CPUs, and then circulated back out again, and then it plugs into a, a manifold. We've got hey, a, hang on a sec. Yeah. What do you say coolant? Is it antifreeze? Is it water? Is it fluorine dirt? What is it? Uh, it's actually a water-based solution with yeah. propylene glycol and some anti-corrosive and anti-fungal. Um, so make sure that it's stable, we don't get any floaties growing in there over time. <laughs> it is a nice warm water solution, so we have to be careful. Yeah, it's important to clean the taps uh, occasionally. All right, I get it. Uh, so this is, this is one nice example. We've got one up here, which is a, uh, a super micro super blade, um, where we've actually got four CPUs in one node uh, and so we're two coolant uh, connections uh, is enough to supply for four CPUs um, and you can start to get a sense and a flavor that it just depends on the form factor of the server itself how we apply the solution it is nice that we've got an ability to support not just CPUs but also accelerator cards or even potentially custom ASICs I can, I can show you a couple over here as well. This is actually an interesting one. We have a, uh, an open compute uh, standard oh, one U server. The OCP project stuff, uh, yeah, the, the Facebook stuff. That's right, so we, we work together with Penguin Computing here and this one's actually quite interesting. It has something called a blind mate connection. So this is uh, a little bit different than these. These types are actually plugged in by hand. This one actually automatically gets plugged in just as you slide it into the chassis. Okay, so it's like a backplane for cooling connection. Exactly, so no different than you would with networking, power, uh, and, and now cooling. The sled goes in and everything's good to go. Automatic. That's right. Now, we've got some nice stuff that we've been doing here recently. Uh, here at the show, NVIDIA announced the new K80 accelerator card. Yeah, yeah, it's um, got so twice the GPUs. That's got to get hot. It does, and something that we developed specifically for that. Uh, you know, it actually turned out to be a great project for us. We have enough cooling for both GPUs as well as all of the power handling and memory that's on the card uh, in one compact form factor. That's so, just made for the K80, you this is, developed this. This is K80, we've got the Xeon Phi, um, all based on the same technology that we've been using as our kind of our modular uh, kit uh, of technology. So inside that K80, um, just like the rest of our solutions, is a micro-channel uh, heat exchanger made of uh, pure copper. So fluid is going over the top of that inside there? Actually, we use a, a patented uh, technology that we developed called split flow. Yeah. Um, so we drive the cool liquid down into the center of that construct, and it splits in two different directions. Uh, so we get the cool liquid in the middle, uh, and it also has the added benefit that the coolant actually can go a little bit slower. It has low flow resistance so that we can support many more processors with very little flow. Did you, did you happen to use CFD to get that? the way you want it? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Cool. All right. Very nice. Um, so that's uh, kind of the cold plate technology, and this uh, is what it looks like in, in final form. Okay. It's only about 15 and a half millimeters tall, which allows us to, uh, to keep uh, uh, our integration burden very low. Yeah, so it's that, it's that ain't a big high profile. There. No, it fits inside just about everything with right, no trouble. Right. And there's flexibility for this too. So we can have the coolant goes in the intake here yeah. and then we can come out here or here so that we've got lots of flexibility when customers are coming to us asking for challenging integration stuff. Yeah, cuz this thing can't be uh, 8 inches tall because that doesn't fit inside the server. Right? That's right. You got it. Got it. All right. 
Um, so we can go and see what happens after that because all of these solutions plug into the manifold module and then we dissipate the heat. So let's go have a look. Okay. What do we got going here, Jeff? Well, this is an example uh, of our, our manifold module. So you can see we talked about all of the server technology and how we have the loop, uh, the yeah. tubes coming out yeah. into quick disconnects. So these are, these are specially designed dry break quick disconnects that are put together by a partner of ours called Stobley. Okay. Um, and you can see here that it is a flush mount dry break so that when I say dry break it means it actually is dry so it's not it, just drip free okay it's actually when it dry. pops it doesn't spray water right? exactly Got we it. have to make sure that we are keeping the liquid inside the tubes at now, all times now did you get that from hydraulics technology or do you have to develop that yourself no we didn't develop this we bought this uh, in and developed it in partnership with Stobley so they're Stobley. the world authority on dry break quick disconnects right. it's an all-metal uh, construction so that it's reliable for hundreds and hundreds of connect disconnect cycles excellent okay um, so the liquid once we have the heat we have we have cool liquid going into the server yep. and and the warm liquid coming back out onto right. the manifold where that goes after that is that we come into what we call our CHX Okay, so this is a liquid to liquid heat exchanger. And what that means is that we have the, the, the uh, coolant from the servers coming into what we have here is a liquid to liquid heat exchanger. And there, all of the heat is actually transferred to facility water. Okay. So we have the coolant coming in, uh, it goes into this, goes through the, the, the centralized pumps uh, there. Um, and we have a, a reservoir um, an accumulator here, yeah. uh, and then uh, the and then af after it's cooled, it goes back out to the manifold. Okay. Um, but in the facility side of the loop, we have the cool facility water. Now that's coming from either a cooling tower or a dry cooler. Maybe you're in a adi adiabatic cooling, um, and that comes in here and gathers the heat from the other uh, coolant circulation yeah. uh, and then delivers the warm coolant back out to the facility. Okay, so I want to point out here, Jeff, that what this device on top, this is a 2U, I believe, a form factor that That's does right. this. How much can that 2U device, which is basically a heat exchanger, yep. how many, you know, is this a rack full of cooling? What? That's right. So if we're doing just one rack or two or three racks, then this is the right solution for that. So gotcha. we have this 2U module just plugs into the rack, yeah. and with that it connects into the into the manifolds, and it can handle at a at an approach temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. This can do 40 kilowatts. Wow! So a, a major full rack of uh, uh, 40 kilowatts. That's a that's, very that's dense a serious rack. dense rack. Yeah. Um, can you walk me through the PSI? And, and and through here roughly sure uh, so the the, the um, it's it's not a very high pressure system because we have low flow resistance going in here okay. um, so the pumps are actually what are driving the circulation uh, through these tubes here and and we're looking at well under 10 psi um, yeah. for the entire circulation on the coolant side yeah. on the facility side here um, then that depends on the facility, yeah, right? So yeah. that could be, you know, 40, 50, 60 PSI. Okay. Um, we want to make sure that that's actually very well controlled and well regulated. This, in fact, actually is a proportional valve that can go to a full stop. So if we end up having some sort of a problem in here with facility water flow, we can shut it off right here at, its, at it, the first point as it comes in. Um, it also acts as a proportional valve. So if we're using chilled water, we want to make sure that we don't allow the the coolant to be overcooled. Okay, yeah, right. This was this was my next question. You know, like what if the the incoming water suddenly is at 33 degrees? You're gonna have to deal with condensation because uh, that's a lot of uh, yeah. Right? To to avoid condensation specifically, we actually have a humidity sensor and temperature sensor here to uh, to understand and calculate dew point and we limit the flow of that chilled water coming through here so that we never oh. get down below dew point. Gotcha. We don't want condensation happening inside servers. Yeah, yeah. That would be bad. But essentially this is a tank uh, and if, if something happens, it's, it's gonna pool in. Here. It's designed to, to house the liquid, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Or at least a limited amount of it before it gets shut off. And the, the, the sensors and your smart software are gonna detect something bad is going on and then what happens? Uh, well, an alert would get thrown, it yeah. would shut the system down, okay. do the best to contain uh, all of the, the yeah. coolant flow. Yeah. And then we can see the uh, 
Uh, we've got a touch screen on the front of each of the systems here, and it has various different capabilities, but it's monitoring the, all of the temperatures within uh, alert limits uh, yeah. as well. It also is going to, uh, so right now we've got a pump error that lists here because we actually turn the pumps off because it's not a running system. Right, right. Uh, and the dew point is okay. Okay. Um, so then on top of that, we're also monitoring the, the high pressure, low pressure, the flow and the dew point and the humidity and reporting that. It has an ability to log the system and it's on the TCP IP network so that it can actually send out emails, uh, be compatible with BMC, uh, IPMI, uh, or you know any other uh, web server infrastructure that the data center might have. Very nice. Now, we've got something that scales up considerably better than this if you're going to be doing, you know, six to ten to a hundred racks. Uh, and we can have a look at that over here. Let's take a look. Okay, Jeff, what do we got here? This is a big rack of uh, pipes and stuff. What's up? Well, this is uh, a CHX650. So we talked a little bit about the CHX40 over there, yeah. which is actually based inside the rack. Right. Now, if we are going to be going to many, many racks, then we've got a much more uh, robust unit here. That would be putting about 20 liters a minute or five gallons a minute out to the rack. Yeah. This is capable of doing a little over 350 liters a minute. Okay. So it has these large pumps down here that you can see, yeah. uh, and they're capable of, of the, only one of them ever runs at a time, um, okay. so you've always got one uh, as a redundant backup. Okay. Um, and actually once a week, they switch. Oh, okay, so the thing does, like an old diesel generator hasn't been started in 30 years, you don't have that problem. Make sure that they're having the same wear life uh, and yeah. that they're always in commission yeah. uh, and that when if, if one were to fail, we don't want to find out then that the other one isn't working either. Gotcha. All right. Um, so this is a, an impressive setup, and it has all the same sort of sensing technology that we talked about in the CHX40, but obviously on a slightly grander scale. You see the two-inch pipe that we're pushing out here. It has exactly the same functionality. There's an accumulator tank. Um, there's a, a plate heat exchanger in behind that uh, metal box yeah. uh, and a proportional valve here that is also doing the same dew point protection. Gotcha. Um, so now, but we're pushing out an awful lot more coolant. Uh, we can see that that coolant is delivered up through these large tubes here. We can have a look from this side perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, so I see facility, it tells me. That's right. So the cold in. Something warmer coming out. That's right. So you can see, actually, it's insulated inside here in case it's a chilled water supply. Yeah. Uh, we, we do the same in there, but it's a little difficult to see anything. Sure. Um, and then it goes directly into a large filter uh, to ensure that we're not going to get fouling inside the um, uh, the plate heat exchanger. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes and, and gathers the heat from the coolant and then discharges it out back to the facility. Okay. Um, now, on the coolant side, we're actually bringing in the warm coolant, cooling it off, obviously, and then sending back out the cold coolant. And we can see up here that we've got the, the network of coolant distribution going to each rack. So you can see the drops coming into the racks. They're on quick disconnects as well. Uh, and then that will supply that coolant into the manifold. And then it's exactly the same as what we looked at over here. So this, this device, this, this could cool a, a pretty good sized data center, this, this one rack. With, a, with some water fed to it. Yeah, and the, the advantage of this is that it takes all that high pressure um, facility water, yeah. right? So we talked about 50, 60, 70 PSI. Yeah. It's nice to be able to have this remote and away from the racks. Okay, so this doesn't need to be next door amongst all my expensive, densely populated servers, does That's it? That's right. This can be remote. It can be even in another room. Um, so that if you want to have that, that high pressure stuff abstracted from your expensive IT equipment, this is one strategy and a way to do it. Put it on the roof or in the basement or whatever, right? Exactly. So, and when we're delivering out to the, to the, uh, the various different racks, we have options too that if we wanted to have some sort of disaster recovery, if, if we had somebody you know, back in with a forklift or something like that and it yeah. takes a few of the, the, the nodes off, you can manually shut these valves off or optionally, there are um, electronically controlled valves that can be instigated there as well gotcha. to isolate on a rack-by-rack -rack basis. Gotcha. Just depends on what the customer's requirements are. Right. Now, we have one additional advancement that we're showing here at the show for the first time that we're pretty excited something about. Something new? Yeah, something oh, new. All right, let's see. All right, Jeff, what's this new thing you were describing earlier? 
Well, we, we talked a little bit about over here, if we have an incident, then we can isolate at the rack level, yes. right? Cut the coolant su fl supply off. But what we've done is brought that down now to the level of the server. Okay. So we have, we have leak sensing cable capabilities here. We can route this wherever we think that there's a sensitivity or the possibility of a leak. Now, if we were to actually sense a leak, um, I can just get my fingers a little bit moist here. It doesn't take very much, okay. right? A little, a little perspiration. That's and right. Now, now what's so if it's a sense of leak. Now you didn't hit a button there. You just had no, a, no. Uh, a moist get, finger. That's right. So if it if it senses any moisture or there's a, a, a thought that the system believes that there's a loss of system integrity inside the server, instantaneously what happens is that the quick disconnects here, which are again dry break yeah they instantly release so now what we've done is isolated this zone and you can tell there's just not very much liquid available to go anywhere right. um so then we're, we're limiting the zone of of issue to a very very small amount of fluid so this would be maybe a, an ounce or two at the most okay, so that's what happens mechanically the water has now stopped from coming in what happens electronically at that moment uh, well, electronically, the signal gets relayed to the control system, yeah. uh, a notification gets flagged, and then in the control system that the data center is using, the operator would be notified to come and have a look and, and deal with whatever the server issue may or may not be. But the, but the point is that the server won't keep cooking away here with no cooling coming in. That's right. right. Well, in, under normal circumstances, if you end up with an overheating condition, then the server is going to shut itself off. I got, I got you. All right. That's very exciting. What, what did you call this again? This DCLC. Uh, it? So that's 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 our, our direct contact liquid cooling, which is all of our technology. Yep. But we call it the the uh, uh, quick disconnect auto eject. Quick. So okay, no, just like like Top Gun, hit the eject button, quick disconnect, auto eject. Yeah, we, we're probably going to come up with a better marketing name uh, for it by the time we uh, talk uh, next. I'll work with you on that. <laughs> right. But very cool. Uh, Jeff, I want to thank you for sharing this. This is fascinating stuff. Oh, it's been a fantastic year for us, and we're yeah. really happy to be here. Our customers are, are giving us some really good feedback, and, and we're excited about the installations that we're doing all, all around the world. Yeah, it's really exciting to see this all come together because the future is liquid cooling. You cannot cool 100 kilowatt racks with air, and nobody knows that better than you guys. Yeah, we're just excited that the rest of the industry is starting to pay attention to us. <laughs>